and world titles under his leadership. Tonight, we remember legendary coach Ed Temple. News Channel 5's Jonquil Newland joins us from First Tennessee Park. Jonquil, what kind of impact did he have on track and field? Well, Vicki, it was an impact large enough that it warranted a statue be erected in his honor. This statue was unveiled in 2015 and depicts Coach Temple as many knew him best. At Tennessee State University, a few names rise above the rest. You have uh, Coach McClendon uh, and, and just the tremendous things that he did as a basketball coach here. And then you have Big John. Women's track and field coach Ed Temple rounds out what TSU calls the Big Three. I actually met Coach Simple when I started in 1989. Valencia Jordan serves as TSU's associate athletics director. He talked to me about understanding the lay of the land in, turn, in terms of being here at Tennessee State, but also what it takes to be a coach and be in it for the duration. Temple is credited with nicknaming the women's track and field team the Tiger Bells. Under him, they brought home 24 national titles. If you didn't give him 100 percent, you didn't run track and field for Ed Temple. Former News Channel 5 sports director Hope Hines first met Temple nearly 50 years ago. When I got here in 71, he was already a legend. One thing he always had when you saw Ed Temple was a stopwatch. A memory now captured to withstand time. He was just one, not only a great coach, he was a fine gentleman. It's going to be uh, not just a tough loss, I think, for Tennessee State University, but I think the global loss in terms of all the countries and people that he connected with uh, via the Olympics. Now, Coach Temple led the women's U.S. Olympic team in 1960 and in 1964. His name was inducted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame in 2012. At First Tennessee Park, I'm John Quill Newland. News Good morning. It is 6.30. Thanks for waking up with us here on Fox 17 this morning. I'm Jennifer Waddell. And I'm A.J. Hilton. Breaking news from overnight. Legendary TSU coach Ed Temple has passed away. Fox 17's Harriet Wallace is live here in studio to talk about his life and his legacy. Harriet, good morning. Good morning. Now, this is a hard hit for the TSU community, which is pretty close knit. His daughter, Edwina Temple, notifying TSU officials late last night of his death. Now, Temple's name is on a street here in North Nashville, and there's even an annual track and field competition that bears his name. And it's only fitting considering his legacy. Now, Temple coached the women's track team from 1953 to 1994 at TSU. He also was a two time U.S. Olympic track coach. Now, the famed TSU Tiger Bells won 27 Olympic medals under his leadership. This news is starting to hit TSU supporters and alumni as they're waking up this morning. Coming up, we're going to have more memories from those who are mourning his loss. Back to you. Overnight learning of the passing of legendary TSU track coach Ed Temple. He died at the age of 89 years old, confirming that with his daughter and TSU this morning. Of course, Coach Temple coaching at TSU for more than 40 years, leaving a long-lasting legacy and his name seen all over the Nashville area. We have Ed Temple Boulevard and over here at First Tennessee Park, the bronze statue erected just within the last year, honoring Coach Ed Temple with a stopwatch and a book in his hand, proving that he was much more more than just a coach. Now, not only was he TSU's head coach, he also coached the Olympic women's team in track and field in 1960, again in 1964, and under Temple, they won 23 total medals. But something that I want to read to you all this morning and show you just kind of the man that he was here on the statue, it says, Coach Temple is just as proud that every single one of his 40 Olympians earned her diploma as he is of his 23 Olympic medalists. We're following Coach Ed Temple's career and reflecting on his time here in Tennessee on Fox 17 this morning.
The sports world legendary TSU track coach Ed Temple has passed away. Sophie Nielsen Colding's been going through the News Channel 5 archives, and Sophie Temple leaves behind a legacy not just here, but really all across the country. That's right, Amy. And right here at TSU, the Edward S. Temple track is a physical reminder of a man who accomplished so much. His athletes taking home more than 30 national titles and 27 Olympic medals. But still, there are countless people who hold on to memories of the man in their hearts. We heard from a few of them in Temple himself when Temple retired from TSU in 1994. As a coach, athletes said Ed Temple was as tough as they come. We ran and, and, and rain. We ran when it was 102. You know how it gets down in Nashville? You didn't breathe hard. If he came up to you and you were breathing hard, you stopped breathing hard. <laughs> you did not breathe hard because he meant it. You are going to be in shape. But the success of the TSU Tiger Bells didn't happen overnight. When I came in 46, we didn't even have a track. Uh, around the football field. It was just about three quarters of a track because it was a dump. Temple started with no equipment and a limited budget, but those weren't the only obstacles he faced. He coached a team at a historically black university at a time when racism was woven into the fabric of everyday American life. We had to pack brown bags because we couldn't stop and eat no place. We could barely get gasoline. We couldn't go to the restroom. We had to pull alongside of the road. But overcome it, they did. Temple's most famous Tiger Bell, Wilma Rudolph, was considered the fastest woman in the world in the 1960s, and his athletes raked in Olympic medals. Many of them also went on to pursue advanced degrees. Looking back, many former Tiger Bells see a man who wasn't just a coach, but also a father figure. You know, you can see it. You can sense the way in which he beams when he sees one of us, when he hears about something. That, that one of us have accomplished. We know, uh, at least I know, that, that he, he is really proud of the accomplishment that, that his girls have done. Ed Temple was 89 years old. There's also an Ed Temple Boulevard in Nashville and a nine foot broad bronze statue of him at First Tennessee Park. Reminders of a man who will be greatly missed. Live in Nashville, Sophie Nielsen, Holding News Channel 5. Lots of people remembering Ed Temple today and the legacy leaving behind. We've got more on his legendary career on our website, newschannel5.com. It just come along stage by stage. I mean, it was step by step. It was determination, what the girls had determination. I always try to put into the girls' mind, look, if the boys can do it, you can do it. I mean, and we came along at a time, I mean, when I was coming along, we had great football teams. Uh, uh, we had great basketball teams. We had the NAIA championship teams in 57, 58, 59. But we were the first sport in Tennessee State to win an uh, integrated championship. The key behind it was Dr. Davis. Dr. Davis was our president at that time, Walter S. Davis. He started to build the program. He built a football and he built a basketball. He wanted, as he would call it, A-class and deluxe fashion. That was his the terms that he'd always use, A-class and deluxe fashion. That's the, what he wanted Tennessee State to be in academics and in athletics. He wanted us to be great. He could visualize, even back then, in the 40s, he could visualize us eventually integrating and playing integrated teams. He knew it was going to take up time and everything. He knew football couldn't do it right away, so he pushed basketball. Basketball was the thing that opened up, but to his shocking, it was women's track that really blasted the thing, and really, you know, they weren't thinking about women's track. They had no idea it was going to move the way it did. I didn't have no idea it was going to move the way it did, but it did. He gave women's track their start because he's the one that uh, got us a station wagon so we could go to Tuskegee, in 1950 and just to go to the one meet, at least he gave us that, you know, he started us out, but he had no idea, even to the time he retired, uh, he was just shocked that women's track moved up above basketball and football over there, because we had a chance to represent the USA, but we represent the United States, and we ran against the world. The world, when you win an Olympic medal, you run against the world. Track really put this school on the map, yeah. was no doubt about it.
they called first call and uh, I didn't pay that much attention. Then they said the second call and somebody, somebody came over to me and said, me, said the woman was laying up there on the, on the rub down table. I went up there and she's laying up there sleeping. I woke her up and said, come on, John. I said, it's time for you to run the hundred. I said, get on up there. Said, okay, she yawned, stretched, got her track shoes, jotted all up there. He will run to this one special seat. And by the time I came underneath the tunnel into the stadium, I could look and see him. Ed Temple, coach of the 1960 U.S. Women's Olympic track team, brought Wilma Rudolph and her Tiger Bell teammates from Tennessee State University all the way to Rome to run against the best in the world. After it was over, somebody said, Wilma won. I said, Wilma won? And then they flashed up on the board there. It was the summer of 1960, and people the world over gathered around TV sets to watch the first widely broadcast Olympics from Rome. American athletes did not disappoint, as viewers at home were treated to a U.S. team packed with surprising talent. It was Jerry West and Oscar Robertson, two future NBA legends who won gold on the basketball court, and an unknown boxer named Cassius Clay, who shocked everyone by making good on what would become a lifetime of boasts. Still, the biggest shocker of all was Wilma Rudolph, a skinny black girl from Clarksville, Tennessee, who suffered from polio as a kid. She dominated the track, outrunning everyone to bring home three gold medals. Images of the Tiger Bell's Olympic glories were beamed from Rome into living rooms across the United States. As thrilling as these images were, it was still 1960, and with the turn of the television dial, Americans watched the civil rights movement unfold on the nightly news, with sometimes violent results. There comes a time when people get tired of being trampled over by the iron feet of oppression. The Tiger Bell runners from their small, historically black college knew the pressure cooker of the Jim Crow South all too well. But the ladies from Tennessee State, coached by Temple, ran so well that their talent was undeniable, filling the U.S. women's track team roster almost top to bottom. Temple coached the Tiger Bells for 44 years, building one of the most dominant legacies in all of sports. His teams won 34 national track titles and produced 40 Olympians who won 23 Olympic medals. Winner of two gold medals, Barbara Jones, was another star among Temple's Tiger Bells. If you watch Wilma Rudolph's form, you'll see she runs just like this because that's what Temple taught us, and we taught Wilma, and that's the reason why Tennessee State was a champion team from 1950 on to 1994. Tiger Bell's results coming in first in the Olympics because that was Temple's philosophy. As African-American women running in a time before desegregation or Title IX, this tradition of winning came in the face of long odds. No coach and no team in any sport overcame greater obstacles to achieve so much on the world's largest stage. And yet, the story of Temple and the Tiger Bells is largely unknown. It was a wonderful feeling, and I say to young people, when you're watching the Olympics, just remember how hard it was for those athletes to get to that podium. Lucinda Williams is another Tiger Bell alumna from Rome 1960. Along with Barbara Jones, Wilma Rudolph, and a fourth Tiger Bell teammate, Martha Hudson, Lucinda was part of the 4x100 relay team. The four Tiger Bells ran their way into the final race, where they served up one of the most exciting Olympic moments from Rome that summer. America's team is made up entirely of Tennessee State U Tiger Bell. They recall the scene before the race, as they strode out together onto the track at the famed Stadio Olimpico. When they marched us out and you look around, you see the hundreds of thousands of people. We just said, we know we have to get the baton to Wilma. She says, uh, we got to get this gold medal because uh, I said, we will. When they placed us in our position, I'm on the curve. Gun goes off and Martha starts. It's a terrific start. Barbara picks it up. And I was going to run my very best. The baton gets to me, and I go like I have never gone 
before. And when I get my mark with Wilma, there's a hesitancy. So consequently, the baton does not get in the hand. I said, what is going on? Because that's something we just didn't do. But I do not give up. And I put it in there. And I said, go. As soon as she got that baton, she said, I got to win. She said, get me the baton. She said, we're going to get up on that stage. She said, get me the baton. Wilma delivered on her promise, helping the Tiger Bell set a new world record. We are four African-American girls representing the whole United States of America, being able to stand on that podium and to see our flag going up. Gold medals in hand, the Tiger Bells became overnight sensations among the first black women ever celebrated as bona fide sports stars. The Europeans went wild for Wilma. The Italians called her the Black Gazelle, and to the French, she was the Black Pearl. The world wanted to see Wilma. They wanted to see Wilma in Germany. They wanted to see her in Holland. She can't even put down her sweats or her warm-up shoes. They want to take them. She gets on the bus. They want to rock the bus. Despite their newfound celebrity, Temple and the Tiger Bells returned home to the Jim Crow South and were once again relegated to second-class citizenship. Now, it was great why they come all, came, why come out to the airport, the mayor, the governor, the president, everybody patting you on the back, having an assembly at the school, band playing. Boom. Oh. You right back to zero. Right back to zero. What do you have to do? We done set world records, we done set Olympic records, and no. The mayor and everything said, well, we'll have, a, we'll have two band quits. We'll have one for the, for the blacks and one for the whites. And women said, no, we ain't gonna have that. She said, if we don't have one band quit, then we're not gonna have none. In those early days of the civil rights movement, an integrated banquet was no small feat. The Tiger Bells faced the usual racism of the time. Nowhere was this more apparent than when the team set out on the road for a track meet. For this meant a long ride traversing a hostile and segregated country. We knew that number one, we couldn't stop in hotels, we couldn't use the bathrooms, and we could not eat in restaurants. It doesn't sound as sanitary as you would think, but we had jars because we couldn't go to the bathrooms. This is what we encountered. Even coming back after the Olympics, we encountered that. It didn't matter if you were an Olympian. You were told, you know, we don't serve, and you know the word they use. I remember stopping and Coach Temple going into a, a restaurant. And the first thing the man said is, we do not serve niggers. That was my first realization. And that took an effect upon all of us. But here was Coach Temple and he said, never let anyone deter you from meeting your goals and objectives. This is just one incident that is a challenge to you. Stressing the need to face all challenges, Coach Temple shaped his Tiger Bells to be successful black women on and off the track. I would get the grades before they would get them. Now everybody's sitting around that table and I'm going over everybody's grade. Lucinda Williams, now let me see. You had English on, so you got a B, that's good. Now what's, what's this D here for in math? Coach Temple just taught us you did your best. You used your God-given talent of athletics and education to let people know that you were the best and that you could compete with anyone. Coach Temple also kept his girls out of harm's way by keeping them cloistered on campus and enforcing a strict regimented schedule. This was especially important for those who hadn't grown up in the South, like Barbara Jones. One of the things my mom feared was for me to go from Chicago down South because I was a person who would speak my mind, but Mr. Temple protected us. He knew where we were every minute on that campus. I have a tendency to be a little hippie, so he said, but Jones, I don't want you eating any cake. 
no sweets. And when I went through the cafeteria line, the cashier said, uh, no pie for you, BJ. Mr. Temple has left orders of what you can eat and what you can't eat. Mm -hmm. He was the meanest man, uh, very strict, uh, but also very humble, um, you know, and he, he took you as you were, but you knew that he meant business. Temple was a motivator. There were no divas on the team. Everybody got the same thing, discipline. It was such a blessing when we got older because it made us better people. It's just a matter of pride that we still have. With Coach Temple's high standards, the Tiger Bells were expected to achieve. Rome 1960 was just the beginning. The Tiger Bells kept winning, scoring victories both on and off the track. Prior to that time, women didn't get invited. So Wilma opened up the doors there, there was no doubt about it. They saw what we had to go through and they saw that women can do. They couldn't help but come through and say, hey, we gotta do something for women. Along with the fight for racial equality, the legacy of the Tiger Bells helped forge the way for a generation of female athletes with the eventual passage of Title IX. And that's one of the things that kept us going, kept us wanting to do well so that others could look back and say they did it, then I can do it too, a young girl can say that. And so I believe that we will trailblazers to set the stage for others to come. Developing athletes was just as important to him as developing character. Developing character. Developing character. Nashville and the nation lost one of the all-time greats in sports today, TSU track coach Ed Temple. He put the city and the university on the map and guided some amazing athletes to Olympic gold. Channel 4's Forrest Sanders has more on the legend. Forrest. Yeah, Jeremy, for decades, Temple worked with TSU's women's track team, the Tiger Bells. Friends say developing athletes was just as important to him as developing character. The statue at First Tennessee Park just sums up Coach Ed Temple, the sharp focus, stopwatch in hand. I think he trained them tough, and I think he trained them fair in order for them to be the best. That they understood they had to, to really be pushed to the limits. They knew that they were going to get the best in Coach Temple. Running under a hot sun, TSU students Alexia King and Jasmine Spearman say getting tired isn't an option not with the legacy they have to live up to. We practice every day to live up to their standards. The legacy here is amazing, so that made everybody want to become a Tiger Bell. TSU Associate Athletics Director Valencia Jordan says those standards were in large part set by Temple, the women's track team coach from the 50s to the early 90s. The biggest thing that, that he taught all of us was to push them beyond what they thought was possible. And she says it was perseverance that led Temple to be U.S. women's track coach at the Olympics twice during a time of gender and racial barriers. That team included Wilma Rudolph. He was able to break down those barriers when it came to Wilma Rudolph. Temple's passing last night at the age of 89 it's a hard loss for TSU. But Alexia and Jasmine are safe for Temple. They're pushing even harder. He's the reason why we're here and able to run. Yeah, so I just want to thank him for that. And Mayor Berry has directed departments to light up the Korean Veterans Boulevard Bridge and public buildings in blue tonight to honor Temple. Demetria.